Okay, for this week, we will continue chapter 22, uh, a little bit of chapter 22, 23. So uh, let's look at the pre-recorded video first, and then I will explain later, okay? Assalamu alaikum and good day students. I'm Miss Putri and today we'll be learning chapter 22. As you can see here, these are the topics that will be covered in this chapter 22. You'll be learning about index of refraction. Can you see the slide? Can you see Yes. Okay, thank you. Right. Snell's law, the properties of refraction. Total internal reflection, dispersion, and also the rainbow. These are the learning outcomes for this chapter. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to state the definitions of index of refraction, apply the Snell's law of refraction, explain the concept of critical angle and total internal reflection and its application, for example, fiber optics, describe the concept of dispersion and explain the formations of rainbow. The refraction of light. Light moves at different speed through different media. When light passes from one transparent medium to another, it is refracted because the speed of light is different in the two media. So when it travels from different medium to another different medium, there is a change in speed which causes the ray to bend. As you can see in this diagram, uh, this light is indicated by the blue line. It's traveling from medium 1, which is colored in green, into medium 2, which is colored in gray. There is a relationship between the angle of refraction with the different speed. Trigonometrically, we can calculate the angle here, theta 1 and the theta 2. So sine theta 1 is equals to the V1 delta T divided with the length of AB. And sine theta 2 equals to V2 delta T divided with the length AB here. We simplify and we come up with the expression of sine theta 1 equals sine theta 1 divided V1 equals to sine theta 2 per V2. So there is a relationship between the angle of refraction with a different speed. The speed of light is given by the index of refraction of that medium. The index of refraction of a medium is defined as the ratio of C per V. C is the speed of light in vacuum. V is the speed of light in medium. So we arrange this we got V equals to C per N. And we substitute this into the expressions that we got in the previous slide. And we come up with this one, which is sine theta 1 over C per N1 equals to sine theta 2 over C per N2. And now we can write the angle of refraction in terms of the index of refraction. And we, we come up with a law that we call as the Snell's law. N1 sine theta 1 equals 2 and 2 sine theta 2. This diagram shows the different speed of light in a different medium. As wave move from medium 1 to medium 2, its wavelength changes due to different speed, but the frequency remains constant. In this table 20.6, it shows the index of refraction for common substances like diamond, which is 2.42, and the least one is air, which is 1.000293. Index of refraction is a dimensionless number that is greater or equal to 1. So index of refraction must be greater or equal to 1 because V or the speed of light in medium 
is always less than C. And N is equal to 1 for vacuum. When a ray of light enters the medium where its speed decreases, it is bent toward the normal. So this ray is actually coming from a medium with less density into a medium with more density, for example, from air to water. The next one, the other way around, which is when the ray light enters a medium where its speed increases, it is bent away from normal. So the light, the incident ray, is coming from a medium which has high higher density into a medium with a less density so it is refracted away from the normal here there is no change in direction of propagation if there is no change in index of refraction let's do a quick quiz a material has an index of refraction that increases continuously from top to bottom. Of the three paths shown in the figure A, B, C here, which path will a light ray follow as it passes through the material? So this material has an index of refraction increases continuously from top to bottom, which is the end N here, and this is N1, this is N2. N here is, N1 is less than N2. And N2 is more than N1. Because it says here, increases continuously from top to bottom. So of all the three paths here, which one is the right one? So definitely C. Okay, let's do the first example by using Snell's law. A beam of light in air enters water with index of refraction 1.33 and diamond with index of refraction 2.42 at angle 60 degree relative to normal. Find the angle of refraction for each case. Question asking for theta 2. Given theta 1 is... 60 degree and also given to you the index of water which is 1.23 and the index of diamond 2.42 so let's look at, at this diagram so for the first case from air to water so this is the incident angle 60 degree and you need to find the refracted angle okay so by using Snell's law you just substitute all the information given here and directly you can get the answer and one here is for air and sine theta one here is 60 substitute and two here is water which is 133 sine theta two here is the one that you need to find same goes to the next one from air to diamond using n1 sine theta 1 equals to n2 sine theta 2 n1 is air which is 1 theta 1 is 60 degree n2 is diamond 22.42 and theta 2 is the thing that you need to find so you can get the answer here On to the next example. You may discuss this with your lecturer. Okay. Refraction can make objects immersed in water appear broken and create mirages. For example, uh, you can see the pencil is appear to be broken or distorted like this. This is the apparent position of the pencil. And this is the actual position of the pencil. And you also can see mirages if you're driving on a highway on a hot day. On to the next topic, total internal reflection. What is total internal reflection? 
Total internal reflection occurs when light encounters the boundary a medium with a higher index of refraction and one with lower index of refraction. As you can see from this first diagram, it shows a small angle is being incident from medium 1 having higher index of refraction and the refracted ray is onto the medium 2 with lower index of refraction. And some of the light is also being reflected. What happens when we increase the angle of incident? When the larger angle of incident is being applied, you will see that the refracted ray is becoming towards the surface of the medium. And there is also more of the reflected ray. And up to the point when you increase the angle of incident, you will see that the refracted ray lies along the medium or the boundary between medium 1 and medium 2. And the refracted ray is at 90 degree. And some of the light also being reflected. And this shows that when the refracted ray is at angle of 90 degree or lies along the boundary between medium 1 and medium 2, the incident angle, we call that angle as a critical angle. If the incident angle is large enough and the angle of refraction is 90 degree, and this incident angle we call as critical angle. When there is more incident angle is being applied, all of the light is being reflected and this is what we call is total internal refraction. At larger incident angles, the light will be totally reflected. Here is another representation of total internal reflection. As the angle of incident theta 1 increases, the angle of refraction theta 2 increases until theta 2 is 90 degree, as you can see at ray 4. The dashed line indicates that no energy actually propagates in this direction. For even larger angles of incident, total internal reflection occurs here at ray 5. The angle of incident producing an angle of refraction equal to 90 degree is the critical angle or theta c. At this angle of incident, all the energy of the incident light is reflected. The critical angle happens when the angle of refraction is 90 degree. To calculate the critical angle, you have to use this equation. Sine theta c equals to n2 over n1. This equation can only be used when n1 is greater than n2. This is because TIR occurs only when the light is incident on the boundary of a medium having lower index of refraction than a medium in which it's travelling. That is to say, the light must come from the medium having higher index of refraction to medium having lower index of refraction. So what happens if N1 is less than N2? Then this equation would give sine theta c more than 1, which is absurd because the sine of an angle cannot be greater than 1 mathematically. Total internal reflection is used in some binoculars and in optical fibers. This show a picture of strand of glass optical fibers which are used to carry voice, video and data signals in telecommunication network. This is um, the solid glass or transparent plastic rod to pipe light from one place to another. As you can see, uh, there are multiple internal reflection inside this uh, rod. Okay, fiber optics devices are usually useful in viewing images produced at inaccessible location. Total internal reflection also can be seen on a diamond. So when the medium 2 is air, the critical angle is small for substances with large indices 
of refraction like diamond where the end is 2.42 with critical angle 24 degree. This property combined with the proper faceting causes, a, causes the diamond to sparkle brilliantly. Okay, let's find the critical angle for light traveling from glass to air. So by applying the equation that we learned just now, sine theta c equals to n2 over n1. So n1 here is glass and n2 here is air. So by applying that and then uh, substitute all the information given, then you're going to get the critical angle. Next, from glass to water, apply the same equation and substitute the information and you're going to get the critical angle for this one, 62.5 degree. There is a special angle called Brewster's angle. Light reflected at this angle is totally polarized. As you can see from this diagram, the light is reflected and polarized. Reflected light is completely polarized when the reflected and refracted beams are at right angles, meaning 90 degree to one another. And this theta B is the booster angle. The directions of polarization is parallel to the reflecting surface. The polarized light here is parallel with the reflecting surface. As for that, booster angle can be calculated by using this appropriate geometry. Tangent theta B equals to N2 over N1. Moving on to the next topic, dispersion and the rainbow. What is dispersion? Dispersion is the dependence of the index of refraction on wavelength. The index of refraction for material decreases with increasing wavelength. The higher the frequency, the higher the index of refraction. In Snell's law, it indicates that angle of refraction made light enters a material depends on the wavelength of the light. Index of refraction for a material decreases with increasing of wavelength. For example, violet having smaller, shorter wavelength, which is 400 nanometer, refracts more than the red light, which having higher or longer wavelength when passing from air to material. This means that refracted light is spread out in rainbow colors. This phenomenon we call as dispersion. In this diagram, it shows the variations of index of refraction in the visible spectrum with respect to vacuum wavelength for three materials. To understand the effects of dispersion of light, consider what happens when light strikes a prism. A plain glass prism is made in the shape of 30, 60, 90 triangle. This is a plain glass prism. Red and violet light are incident on the prism at right angles to its vertical side. Given that the index of refraction of plain glass is 1.66 for red and 1.7 for violet, find the angle each ray makes with the horizontal when it emerges from the prism. So you have to find this angle for it and this angle for violet. First thing first, we have to apply the Snell's law. N1 sine theta 1 and 2 sine theta 2. We do for the first one, for the first light, which is the red light. So we apply that and 1 sine theta 1 equals to N2 sine theta 2 for the red light. So we're going to have the angle of 56.1 degree. This 56.1 degree is actually from this, this one to this one. Thus, we have to minus 30 degree in order to get this value. 
So when we have minus, we have minus this one, then we get 26.1. So we do the same thing for violet. We apply the Snell's law. Then we have the value for uh, the angle from the this one, which is 58.2, and we have to minus 30 to get the angle here, this one, theta violet. The dispersion of light into a spectrum is demonstrated most vividly in nature through the formation of a rainbow, often seen by an observer positioned between the sun and a rain shower. A ray of light overhead strikes a drop of water in atmosphere and it, it is refracted and reflected. First, it is refracted at the front surface of the drop Violet deviating the most than the red. As you can see, the violet light is refracted more than the red. At the back surface of the drop here, the light reflected and returns to the front surface where it again undergoes ref refraction as it moves from water to air. The formation of a rainbow seen by an observer standing. This is an observer standing and this person can see the rainbow, the picture of a rainbow. To sum up what we have learned in this chapter, first we learn about refraction is the change in direction of light due to a change in speed. Light entering a medium of lower end will be bent away from the normal. If it is entering a higher end, it will be bent towards the normal. The speed of light in a medium is equivalent to C over N. The Snell's law, N1 sine theta 1 equals to N2 sine theta 2. And we learned about critical angle. Sine theta C equals to N2 over N1. And as for that, we have finished learning chapter 22. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, a very good explanation by Ms. Putri. Uh, so do you have any problem? Do you have any questions? Uh, because I believe uh, you already learned these things during your secondary school. Do you have any questions so far? Okay. So far so good? Okay, let me put it in my slide. Okay, so today we learn about the refraction of light. Okay, that is uh, when the light travels in a different medium, so it will have a different speed. Because of that, uh, when the change in speed uh, causes the ray to, to bend. So this is the uh, uh, index, the angle of refraction that we are talking and how it relates to the definitions of the index of refraction. In this case, okay, the index of refraction is equivalent to okay, uh, V equals to C over N. And the index of refraction is N. We rearrange the equation to get C over V. Okay, C is the speed of light in the uh, vacuum, where V is the speed of light in medium. Okay, speed of light in the medium and also in the vacuum. Okay, here are some typical indices of refraction. So uh, we can see that from the uh, slides or, or the videos of uh, Ms. Putri. Okay, a lot of uh, values of index of refraction, you don't have to memorize all this value, but you need to know at least one of it. Eh? Uh, because from here, we can have air. Okay. Actually, air, normally we do use it as and air is equivalent to 1. Actually, the value is not 1. It's 1.000293. 
but you can say that is equal is equivalent to one. Normally, we use water at 1.33 and sometimes we will use ice or other types as, uh, such as uh, diamond or maybe a glass. Okay, so these are the examples. You don't have to memorize. You will be given in, the, in your uh, in the, in the questions. So this is Nesnay's law and how to write it is N1 equals to sine theta 1 equals to uh, N, N1 sine theta 1 equals to N2 sine theta 2. <coughs> Please bear in mind that N1 is the where the ray travels from. Okay, ray travels from N1. Okay, that means this is the angle of incidence, theta i. Okay, so this is theta r, angle of refraction. Okay, but uh, in here, you can see that N1 is where the, the light coming from. So that is N1. Remember, this is index refraction. Okay, index of refraction. And how about N2? N2 is where the ray travels to. Okay, which is in here, this is N, N2. N2 is considered as water. Okay, so N1 is air and 2a is a bottom okay so basic properties these are the basic properties in this one okay we want to uh, uh discuss later discuss further in terms of how can we get uh, our how can we solve the problem of this therefore look at these examples uh, one night uh, while on a vacation in the Caribbean, you walk to the end of the dock and for no particular reason, shine your laser pointer into the water. Okay, you put the laser pointer and then you, you point into the water. When you shine the beam of light okay, on the water of horizontal distance 2.4 from the dock, okay, this is dock, Okay, the one that you standing is dark. You see a gleam of light from a shiny object on the sandy bottom, perhaps a gold doubloon. Okay, if the pointer is 1.8 meters above the surface, so that is 1.8 meters here. Okay. And the water is 5.5 meters, so this is the actual dip. Okay, the actual dip. What is the horizontal distance from the end of the dock to the shiny object? So we can see here. Okay, this always happened to us when you see that. Uh, let's say you 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 come to the uh, swimming pool and you want to go, you want to swim uh, inside the swimming pool and you see that. Okay, the swimming pool is like eh, it's very nampak macam cete. Okay, ah cete, tapi sebenarnya dalam. Alright, so this is due to the reflections of light. Okay, so here, from here, we can uh, calculate the, the equations, find the angle of incidence, uh, angle of incidence. So this is where the pointer, yeah? this is the pointer. Okay, it points to the, to the, to the water and you can see the shines, okay, from the, at the bottom, we can see the, the shines of the uh, a green of a shiny object okay on the sandy bottoms okay so maybe perhaps a, a gold okay if the pointer is 1.8 meters so the height of the pointer is actually 1.8 meters so from here we want to calculate the theta one okay the theta one which means we want to calculate the angle of incidence okay as usual remember to write to calculate the uh, to draw a line that should be called as normal okay normal line so how to get the theta one so from here the theta one is tangent negative one 2.4 okay which is here we use a, a simple trigonometry function 2.4 divide by 1.8 okay uh use here okay 2.4 is here 2.4 and 1.8 to get a 53 so the angle of incidence is considered to be 53. So because theta 1 is considered as theta i, which is the angle of incidence. From the angle of incidence, then we apply the Snell's law to get the theta 2. 
Okay, how to get the theta 2? So how to calculate the theta 2? Use the Snell's law because the theta 1 should be the one that would the light coming from, which is the air. So we use 1 as n equals to 1 because uh, n1 is considered to be index of refraction for air. And the theta 2 uh, and, and n2 is considered to be index of refractions of water at 1.33. Okay, uh, but uh, please check with the uh, appendix. Always check with the appendix. Okay, don't just memorize because sometimes they will use a, a different um, uh, index of refraction for water. Well, maybe a salt water or what. So just use the one that they give inside the question. Okay, don't try to memorize all the uh, index of refraction. Okay, so one point three. Okay, divide by and then you sign negative one so you get 37 degree so the theta 2 is 37 degree <clears throat> and use a simple tangent 2 theta 2 so for use of uh, we can actually get x because x over 5.5 when we tangent and we get here that x is equivalent to 4.1 meters okay this actually we get 4.1 meters so in this case if you want to know the distance from the dock okay from the dock is actually 2.5 meters here so you need to add 2.4 to 4.1 so in the end you will get 6.5 meters okay so actually uh, when you shine through uh, this is how uh, this is actually the the light will is travel like this okay but because of the refractions Okay, it bends towards the normal line because N one is uh, uh, have a lower index of refraction compared to N two because N one is one and N two is one point three three. Okay, this is one example. <clears throat> Okay, and refraction can make object immersed in water appears broken. So this is uh, I've already explained by them, Miss Miss Putri. This is how they get the total internal refraction. If if you are uh, okay, try to uh, explain the total internal refractions. Don't forget to put here. Okay, what is the uh, in in when explaining about total internal refraction, you need to mention about what first mediums uh, light travels from medium that have uh, in, uh, higher refractive index okay okay you need to make, you need to highlight that the light travels from higher refractive index or index of refraction to the lower uh, index of refraction okay higher to lower so when you apply n1 sine theta 1 equals to N2 sine theta 2. Okay, remember this N1 is actually higher. Okay, because this is where the light travels. Travels from the higher refractive index to lower refractive index. Okay, that is the point number one. And the point number two is, you need to mention about how we behave. Okay, if the angle of incidence is large enough, the angle of reflection is 90. Okay. When you uh, talk about total of internal reflection, don't mention yet about total internal reflection. You need to uh, discuss, so you need to put that, that the angle, uh, when you have an angle of incidence, okay, to get the angle of reflection equals to 90. Uh, this is another point, okay. The angle of incidence that give angle of reflection equals to 90. That is number two, okay. And point number three is where, Okay, because that you need to uh, highlight that the critical angle. Okay, the critical angle. How to get the critical angle? Okay, what is critical angle? Theta C. Okay, because the theta C is where you have uh, okay, the angle of incident that give the angle of refraction equals to 90 degrees. Remember? Okay, first of first is you need to mention about uh, the light travels from higher refractive index to low refractive index and the light will have a, 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 a reflection yeah a reflection and refraction okay both 
Okay, because here we have refraction and we here we have a reflection. Okay, so we increase the light, uh, the index, the angle of incidence until the angle of reflection become a uh, refraction become ninety degrees. Okay, as at part C here. Okay, this is where the theta one is equivalent to theta C. Okay. Uh, the theta one is considered to be critical and the angle. And how we get the total internal reflection when the incident angle okay. Don't forget to put here the incident angle, which the angle, uh, the angle that higher, uh, higher than the critical angle. Okay, the total internal reflection happens when the angle of incident higher than the angle of reflect, uh, the angle of uh, critical angle. Okay, remember, uh, how can get total internal reflection when the angle of incident higher than uh, the critical angle? So then we can get the total internal reflection. You can see here all the light travel will be reflected. Okay, reflected. And this phenomenon cannot happen when the, uh, uh, very impossible to happen if the light travels from uh, higher, uh, sorry, low refractive index to low, uh, higher refractive index. Okay, it can only, it can only happen when the light travels from the higher refractive index to low refractive index. Okay, this is the how um, the applications of total internal reflections uh, in the fiber optics. You can see this is the fiber optics. Okay, this is the, the one that came. Okay, the light travels in the speed of light. Remember, when the light travels in the speed of light, can you imagine? Okay, because of that, uh, we are now we are using the internet uh, at your home, maybe using Unify whatsoever. So, so that's how they can increase the performance of your internet connections. Okay, because the light now can travel, it can give you a lot of. That's why right now, uh, uh, let's say in the TV platform, they always use digital. Okay, digital instead of analog. So because they can transfer the informations uh, in the yeah, using the fiber optics. Okay, so they can uh, uh, transfer it in the uh, speed of light. Okay, so this is uh, or another example. Okay, from uh, to find the critical angle. Okay, to find the critical angle with the difference of uh, medium. Okay, let's say this one uh, from glass travel to air and this one glass travel to water. And the difference is uh, quite clear. It's, it's travel to air is 41.8 and travel to water is 62.5. Okay, this is the Brewster angle. Okay, remember the Brewster angle is where the reflected angle and the, and then the refracted angle is 90 degrees to each other. Okay, and 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 we can see there. This is incoming light. Incoming light. Yeah, look at the symbol is unpolarized. Okay, unpolarized. Where the light travels reflected from the Brewster angle is polarized. Okay, remember from the, our previous lesson we learned about how the light is unpolarized and polarized. Okay, this is the Brewster angle. How to get the Brewster angle from the uh, index of reflections. Okay. Okay, do you have any questions? Are <coughs> <coughs> 